in this lecture we are going to talk about fluids in the potential spaces of the body potential spaces are basically cavities like pleural cavity in the lungs pericardial cavity in the heart peritoneal cavity in the abdomen and synovial cavities in the joints and these cavity these spaces these potential spaces they have basically the potential they have the potential to become a space they that's why they are known as potential spaces because normally there is no space normally there is no space between them normally these spaces are present but if there is accumulation of fluid they can become a potential space and they have the potential to accumulate a lot of fluid now why are these spaces important why are we these spaces important and why are we going to discuss them basically this lecture is in in continuation or in our is in continuation with our previous lectures about the edema now fluid accumulation in a potential space is also a kind of edema because it is also accumulation of fluid in an area although this accumulation of fluid is not directly in any tissue which we were discussing previously but it is a kind of extracellular accumulation of the fluid so that's why it is uh, a kind of edema and this is the last topic about uh, the last lecture about the extracellular edema now why basically fluid accumulation occurs in the potential spaces if we talk about the potential spaces the the pleural cavity if we talk about the the pericardial cavity or the peritoneal cavity all these cavities are basically made of two layers suppose for example this is one layer and this is the second layer and there is a thin layer thin film of small amount of fluid present between them and they basically allow the organ to move in the cavity but normally the the space is not there there is no potential space there is no space but there is a potential there is a potential to accumulate and become a proper space now these are two layers there are two layers in the lung in the peri pleural cavity there are two layers in the pericardial cavity there are two layers in the peritoneal cavity and similarly in the synovial cavities now if we see if we look at these uh, layers microscopically this is one layer this is one layer and on the other side is the second layer and these layers are basically made of different kinds of cells and there is some interstitial tissue between these cells so if we dissect these layers under the microscope we will see that they are also made of different cells and they also have interstitium between the cells so this picture is basically the representation of all these potential spaces all these cavities the pleural cavity the pericardial cavity the and the uh, peritoneal cavity similar and the synovial cavity now if there is any problem suppose for example there is any problem and there is uh, ac increased accumulation of fluid now it is important to discuss that this surface this surface for example the surface of this this layer the surface of this layer and the surface of this layer these are two basically layers they are separated here so the surface here and the surface here of both these layers so the surfaces of these layers basically allow the movement of ions proteins and water they allow the movement of water ions and proteins so basically these substances move in and out they keep on coming into this area and then go back into the interstitium they keep on coming into this area and then go back into the interstitium and this is something normal because a thin layer of fluid is present between these two layers now here we have drawn this diagram when a lot of fluid has been accumulated in these spaces but normally this blue color if this this blue color fluid this normally is not present this is a thin layer of fluid which is normal but if there is any abnormality suppose for example any abnormality occurs and the filtration process increases suppose for example there is increase in the capillary hydrostatic pressure suppose for example there is decrease in plasma colloid osmotic pressure or suppose for example there is a decrease in interstitial fluid pressure or decrease in interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure due to any problem like uh, heart failure or kidney failure or liver failure depending upon the area now any problem leading to any decrease or increase in these forces will lead to excess accumulation or excess um, production of these substances now they will not only increase the, the fluid accumulation will not only increase in the interstitium in the interstitium but they will also start entering this area this potential space they will start accumulating between these two layers because every cavity is made of two layers so the fluid will start accumulating in the space between two layers now if we talk about the extracellular edema in feet there is no such potential space so the fluid will only accumulate in the interstitium the fluid will only accumulate in the interstitium as we have discussed in detail previously but in the in um, in case of potential spaces like 
प्लूरल कैविटी और पेरिटोनियल कैविटी और पेरिकार्डियल कैविटी द फ्लूड विल नॉट ओनली एक्यूमुलेट इन द इंटस्टिशियम इट विल ऑल्सो स्टार्ट एक्यूमुलेटिंग बिटवीन दीज टू लेयर्स एंड इट विल लीड टू फ्लूड एक्यूमुलेशन इन दी पोटेंशियल स्पेस इज लाइक दिस सो दिस इज द नॉर्मल स्पेस दिस इज द नॉर्मल सॉरी दिस इज नॉर्मल कंडीशन दिस इज नॉर्मल कंडीशन एंड दिस इज बेसिकली एब नॉर्मल नाउ इन एनी एब नॉर्मल कंडीशन मे इट बी ड्यू टू सम इन्फेक्शन और मे बी ड्यू टू सम जनरलाइज एनिमा हार्ट फेलियर और किडनी फेलियर और लिवर लिवर फेलियर देर इज इंक्रीज एक्यूमुलेशन ऑफ फ्लूड एंड सच एक्यूमुलेशन ऑफ फ्लूड इन द पोटेंशियल स्पेस इज नोन एज इफ्यूजन If this accumulation of fluid occurs in the lungs, in the pleural cavity, it is known as pleural effusion. If this accumulation of fluid occurs in the pericardial cavity, outside the heart, then it is known as pericardial effusion. Similarly, if this accumulation occurs in the peritoneal cavity, then it is known as ascites. Now, most of the time in infections of the lungs. pleural effusion will occur in heart failure or uh, some infections of the heart pericardial effusion may occur in similarly in heart failure or in liver cirrhosis ascites can occur now some of these potential spaces are small they have a small potential some of them have a big potential for example the peritoneal cavity have the potential of around 20 liters up to 20 liters of fluid can accumulate in the peritoneal cavity or up to 20 liters of ascites can occur in different conditions which causes cirrhosis now the problem is that normally normally we discussed that these are the two layers these are the two layers and there is a small amount of fluid normally present hydrogen uh, sorry uh, water ions proteins they normally keep on coming here but the, there is normal supply of blood vessels and lymphatics these black color uh, lines basically show the lymphatics so these lymphatics normally take away the proteins etc if the proteins starts accumulating here or if the blood vessels or, or the lymphatics are blocked if they are blocked or there is increased pressure there is increased hydrostatic pressure due to heart failure for example or kidney failure then these vessels the blood vessels in the lymphatic vessels are unable to cope with high pressures or blockage and they cannot compensate so the fluid start increasing and this condition will occur and fluid accumulation will occur is for other interstitial um, uh, is of a normal inter- interstitium where the pressure is uh, minus or negative similarly the 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 pressure in the potential spaces is also negative the the pressure in the peri- uh, pleural cavity is around a minus 7 mm of mercury now basically this negative pressure helps to keep uh, them uh, together these uh, this negative pressure basically key helps these uh, cavities in normal circumstances so the normal pressure the normal pressure in the uh, pleural cavities is around minus 7 mm of mercury the pressure in the pericardial uh, cavity is around minus 5 to minus 6 mm of mercury and the pressure in the synovial cavities is around minus 3 to minus 5 mm of mercury so to summarize this lecture potential spaces are basically uh, the spaces or some cavities which are basically present throughout the body uh, and uh, if and they have the potential they have the ability to accumulate a lot of fluids and if uh, fluid accumulates in in these spaces it is a kind of edema and it is basically a kind of accumulation of the interstitial fluid in these spaces now all those conditions which causes edema in, in the interstitial uh, spaces or the extracellular spaces they can cause edema in these potential spaces and basically the 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 surface of the layers of these potential spaces or the cavities they have very less resistance for the movement of water ions proteins so these ions wa- uh, water fluid and proteins they keep on coming into these cavities and are normally taken back with the help of blood vessels and lymphatics but if there is some abnormality if there is some abnormality for example there is high pressure or the lymphatics are blocked then the the fluid that is coming to the cavity is more than the fluid or uh, that can be carried away normally so it starts accumulating and it is known as effusion if this flu- uh, fluid effusion uh, accumulation occurs if this effusion occurs in the pleural cavity it is known as pleural effusion if it uh, occurs in the pericardial cavity it is known as pericardial effusion and if it occurs in the peritoneal cavity it is known as the ascites now not only the in blockage or increased hydrostatic pressure can cause uh, fluid accumulation in these potential spaces but infections infections can also cause accumulation in these spaces so that's all about the uh, you know, fluid accumulation in potential spaces and uh, 
these things, these plural effusions, pericardial effusions, uh, and the uh, SITs, they will be discussed in detail because they are very uh, big topics and there are a lot of causes for these conditions and uh, separate treatment. So they will be discussed in detail. But uh, it's sufficient uh, for this uh, for this topic because it is just to explain that how fluid accumulation in these potential spaces. Thanks a lot for watching the video.